Cholera has no borders. As a PhD student in engineering, I learned that in Haiti, there was no cholera for 100 years until the earthquake happened in 2010. After the disaster, cholera spread through the country, creating outbreaks and deaths to this day. But Haiti's not alone. There are five million cholera cases every year in 41 different countries. And this leads to $3 billion in losses from productivity, human cost, and therapy. It takes seven days to detect four cholera in water. From the time a lab sends somebody out to get to the sample, bring it back, do isolation, enrichment, polymerase chain reaction, serology, TCBS streaking, and a secondary confirmation. This is a long time that takes expertise, and it's expensive. But what's worse is that this leaves communities vulnerable to the water that they drink, that they cook with, that they bathe in. So I decided to solve this problem. I took my PhD technology and research, and I started Omnibiz, where we put the power of the lab in the palm of your hand. And we do this by detecting four cholera in water anywhere in the world in under 30 minutes. We're revolutionizing disease detection. And we do this with an easy-to-use system. We have a hardware component, disposable test kit, and a smartphone that works seamlessly together to detect cholera accurately and affordably. The hardware acts like the portable laboratory. It has a heating unit in order to do DNA amplification, and it has microscope lenses to see down to the nanoparticle level. The test kit has reagents inside for DNA amplification. And when the test kit and the hardware come together, we amplify for the cholera toxin gene. When that's amplified, we create longer strands of DNA, and the solution becomes more viscous in nature. And that's exactly what we're measuring, is the change in viscosity that's occurring. We have two pending patents for this viscosity technique, and we're more sensitive than the status quo. We also have the smartphone component. We're able to see where and when cholera has happened and notify people so that they can come in and eliminate the outbreak before it's too large. Move to demo. If I'm a field worker, I take this entire system with me out to a water source. I fill the disposable test kit with water, and I launch the smartphone app. I begin the test. It tells me to start heating the sample. And during heating, that's where DNA amplification is taking place, and that change in viscosity is occurring. But after the heating, what it says is to move that test kit over to an imaging region. We take a video. And when we're taking that video, what we're looking at is the movement of what's happening inside. We analyze that with our proprietary algorithms, and from that, we're able to see the result. In this case, it's clean water. We can also see the GPS coordinates and timestamp. Move to web page. Also, somebody can go onto the web, go onto our portal, and see where and when cholera is happening, and have these large data sets. Move to presentation. Move to presentation. Thank you. When the solution is contaminated, it looks like this. But we couldn't bring cholera onto the TechCrunch stage today. <laughs> but what's happening in the background is we have a contaminated solution where things are moving very, very slow in nature, or a clean solution where things are moving very, very fast. I inspired my PhD advisors to join me as founders of Omnibiz, and our team together brings expertise in microfluidics, global health, biotechnology, and consumer electronics. Rapid tests, which are our competitors, are very, very inexpensive, but they are highly inaccurate, whereas cell culture methods are very accurate but expensive. We do a B2B sales model, where our hardware is a single-time purchase, and our disposable test kits create the recurring revenue as their single use. And we have letters of intent from five of the largest companies and NGOs within the cholera space. But we're not stopping there. Cholera is a $2 billion market for water detection and surveillance. But the word omnivis means to see everything. So by using our novel IP, 
we change out the chemistry in our disposable test kits, and we can detect for many diseases in many different markets. Omnivis mobilizes the lab, rapidly detecting pathogens, saving lives. If you're an NGO, a water quality expert, or a research hospital, go to omnivistech.com. Thank you. Judges. Well done. So do the NGOs and the other customers that you're speaking to have a budget or a line item allocated to these types of in-field diagnostic and testing devices? I would love to hand that question to Lynn. Let's see if this works. So yes, we're not inventing a new need. These are customers that are currently already water testing. They're just taking a much longer time, costing them much more money. We're expediting it, and we're adding one really important feature, the data. So this allows us to get in front of the infectious disease. We can alert people ahead of time before anyone's actually fallen ill. Yep, whoever feels, like, feels it in their heart. Um, can you talk a little bit more about the validation testing that you've done with your specificity in the seven-day test, and do people feel the need to do yours quickly and then still do the other as a backup so they have to pay for both? So what we do is we work with the largest cholera hospital in the world. They're known as ICDDRB, and they are located in Dhaka, Bangladesh. So when we measure things and when we do our pilots, we want their gold standard to be our stamp of approval for our test because we respect what they say and we know that they are the best and most original researchers within cholera. We have tested over 400 tests to date on sensitivity and specificity and accuracy. We have an accuracy of 94.4%, a specificity of 95.7%, and a sensitivity of 93.1%. So, um, incredible business. Can, can you share a little, little bit about how you might evolve into a platform into these other areas and just what, what does it take and kind of what limitations does the kind of the current device defined for cholera inhibit your ability to move into other areas? So we're starting in water testing. Cholera, we want to do it right the first time. We want to help these communities, but we can see that we can change certain components in the test kit, meaning our DNA primers, and we can look for other diseases. The next ones that our market really points to is hemorrhagic E. coli, which comes in water, and typhoid. And so with those, it's a change of the chemistry. For asking, have we kind of tested these other things? Absolutely. In the laboratory setting, we've tested quite a few diseases in water and a couple in blood as well. And so we're going to be starting there, and then when we go into blood, that will be seeking FDA approval or a CE mark, depending on where we go. Great. Um, so congrats on all the success. It's super inspiring. Um, just to follow up on the first question, how much do, do one of the NGOs spend right now on these types of, of water treatment devices? And what's the process like to convince them to work with, you know, to go away from one of the existing vendors to move over to you guys? Right. So a single test for cholera right now takes $100. And for the lab equipment, that's tens of thousands of dollars. And then when they want to go out into the field and start measuring where they've tested these water sites, that's a GIS mapping system. And that's $2,000. We're aiming for a disposable test kit of $10, so one-tenth the cost per test. And then we're aiming for a hardware device and a smartphone together to be $1,000. So half of the price of a mapping system and quite a bit cheaper than the laboratory. But do you know how much they're spending today? Yeah. So pick one of the NGOs and what would the mm -hmm. actual budget be for the specific product? For like the water treatment product? In field cholera testing. Yeah. Right. I'll hand that to Lynn and she can talk about numbers every month as well. So those numbers change so much depending on what region you're in. So let's take ICDDRB, which is the largest cholera hospital in Bangladesh. Um, because they have to take a water sample back to the lab. And if you know DACA, transportation there is a headache. So at most, they take four to six samples a day. With our product, you can do a lot more. Um, it takes about eight people to do this. So you're not only paying for the time and the transportation and the lab cost, you're also paying for the people hours. Um, off the top of my head, it's a really difficult number because cholera is seasonal there, so there's no hard number. But we have calculated that 
For a small customer, we're estimating 240 test kits per month. For a medium-sized customer, such as an ICDDRB, they would be purchasing 2,000 test kits per month. And these are numbers that we've asked them and they've confirmed. Hero, you had a question earlier? Yeah, it's great mission-driven. Um, ready to go. What you're working on is really fantastic. You're, I just want to get a sense of what is your, when you talk about Bangladesh or different markets, what is the sales kind of journey that you have to go to to get your customers on board? How long does that take? Love to know a little bit more about that. Um, because our founding team is so heavily academic, and ICDDRB is the most respected research hospital in the world for cholera, they've actually reached out to us. So we have a pilot partnership as well as a research partnership with them. Um, we also have letters of intent with them. So this has been an ongoing relationship. I'm actually going back to DACA in about three weeks to complete some final studies. And, and as you grow and scale, when you have to reach out, what do you envisage that, that you know, motion to look like? Answer quickly. Oh, yeah, sorry. sure. Do you want me to go? OK, so right now, word of mouth, academic conferences, reaching out to RFPs, response for proposals, another big one, um, putting papers out there. They found a lot of our journal papers out there and scientific reviewed articles. So that's been fantastic to have on our side. So, yeah, NPR found us. NPR found us, exactly. All right, give it up for Omniviz. Well done.